So I'm in Los Angeles in a very shady back alley um, in the hood. And just so you guys know, like, you never know what you find in places. So here is a really, really interesting car, which owned by my friend. And it was made in another country across the pond and lives in this uh, not all that great looking garage structure. And look at this. It's already smiling out of the garage. A 1959 Wartburg convertible. And this is Victor. Uh oh. Welcome to LA. Now this is where the airplanes are coming in for the LA airport and as you guys can see there are a lot of palm trees around here and I have to admit California has a big car culture I don't like it here but look at what's coming here on the road this is a 1959 Wartburg from East Germany and that's why we are here So we took out this little car for a ride here and as you see it's in pretty good shape. It's a 1959 Wartburg. It was an, this is an export model, um, came from Germany and believe it or not they did export uh, East German cars into the United States. This is one of them. This is a two-door convertible as you see. There were other convertible Wartburgs, they were the sport versions. The sport version doesn't have this kind of top and doesn't have four seats in it. So this one is the convertible version. And uh, here's my friend Victor, he's gonna talk about his car. Hello, my name is Vic Bershansky. All right, let me tell you about this 1959 Wartburg. Uh, it's made in East Germany behind the Iron Curtain at that time, Berlin Wall. Uh, they did export them to the United States. This is one of the export models. Uh, and what the difference is with an export model, uh, they have bumper guards, uh, overrides, they got special headlights, seal beams for the headlights. Now the rear lights have to be red, red, white, red, if you want to call it that, or red, clear, red. Uh, so those are the main things for an export model. And then the serial number has an 02 for export. This one evidently has 00, which is for Germany, but it's got all the export features on it. It is a original U.S. export model, so uh, maybe they took it off the assembly line and shipped it here as an export model, but. It is uh, registered as a U.S. export model. Uh, now, tell, let me tell you, I painted this with two coats of lacquer uh, in my front yard on, on the lawn. Uh, lacquer dries real quick, so uh, you don't get much dust in it. And um, so we polished it out a couple of times, and it looks pretty much like original paint job now. That was uh, back in 95, 92 when I painted it. I'm probably the only person in the United States doing anything with Wartburgs or... Uh, saving them um, you might say uh, I'm the keeper and I'm the rescuer for the Wartburgs. Uh, how it all started was uh, my brother brought home a station wagon uh, Wartburg a four-door four uh, 
camping wagon. And uh, I had a car here made from behind the Iron Curtain. That was a big deal when I was like 12, 14 years old. And uh, ever since then, for the last 40 some odd years, I've been looking for Wartburg's, uh, rescuing them. I rescued two out of the junkyard, pick apart. Um, now about this Cabriolet here, a uh, guy couldn't do anything with it from the East Coast. And um, so uh, after communications with him, I ended up buying it for what he paid for it. Uh, let me tell you about the importers. There was two of them. Uh, Willie Winkin of uh, Los Angeles. He was the West Coast uh, importer of the Wartburgs, uh, west of the Mississippi. And then you had uh, in New York, you had um, Wartburg of America in New York, Brooklyn, New York. They were the two main importers of Wartburgs. Um, and uh, this is what's left of them. <laughs> So what do people think about this car when you show it on a car show? When I take this uh, Wartburg to car shows and stuff, people say, oh, I've never seen one. What is it? And then they look at that three-cylinder motor and they just laugh. <laughs> it, 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 it's good for a few laughs, that three-cylinder motor, because I tell them I left the other three cylinders at home. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, they love it. Uh, they, like I say, they've never seen one before, and uh, it, it's, it's great at car shows. So what are the differences between the export models and the uh, and the original East German uh, market cars? Okay, uh, one of the differences with this uh, model is the first ones that were exported to the United States, they didn't come with water pumps. Then they found out that um, it gets hot here in Los Angeles, so they added water pumps to the export models. And this one doesn't have a water pump uh, because it's got the serial number 00, which means it's not for export, but uh, it is an export model because it's registered here. And uh, the later models, they also had a, a blower motor for the, uh, for the heater, which this doesn't have a blower motor for the heater. Those are about the main two things that are di different. Oh, I did add a, a, a reservoir for the uh, water overflow out of a, a later Wartburg uh, uh, windshield wiper cooler. Uh, yeah. yeah, I added uh, this uh, homemade fan, fan shroud uh, to help keep it cool because it has no water pump and we are here in California and it does get uh, on the hot side here. It does run into the red uh, if I run it on the freeway but for the most part it stays reasonably cool. The seats are an interesting thing in this Warburg because anytime one of these ended up in a junkyard the hot riders they, they went in and they, they stole all the seats from it um, because they're really easy to adapt to any kind of Model A or anything and uh, so it's really weird that to actually see an original upholstered Wartburg seat in the US. You can see inside are the three pedals, of course, clutch brake and the gas. And then uh, there's all the light uh, switches there. The white ones look like pianos. And then there's a radio speaker, which is uh, got a delete plate. Someone added that uh, switch in it, but that's fine. And it's got a, a four speed on the column uh, shifter. So in order to protect the engine, because the two-stroke needs lubrication, the lubrication comes from the fuel-oil mixture. There's no oil mixture system in it. So to protect the engine from when you engine braking, there is a little lever here what you can switch. And that lever is, uh, turns on a, a system called the, uh, um, the freewheeler. The freewheeler actually doesn't let the engine, uh, it's basically free wheels if you want to, want to slow down with the engine so you can't really do engine brake with it if you if this one is turned on so this uh, piece well it has a letter K in it that's for the curtain in the front so you can actually uh, pull uh, a cover over the radiator uh, so uh, over the front grill so the air wouldn't enter into the engine compartment in the cold weather area the next one is that black lever that's the hood release and then these are adjusting the heat those two knobs uh, uh, lever knobs uh, they adjusting the heat now on the side there is a little piece, a uh, little, little compartment which you can open up and put something in there. This one has a nice wooden trim on the side, but only one sun visor. I guess you didn't need it too. One was enough. Now Victor gonna uh, close the top for us. Ready? So you can see how the original top worked. So you have first you have that cover over it. And then uh, it's showing that there was a little uh, clip there. And this is the original top from 1959. And the original boot. And the original boot also. It's really, I don't think anybody even in, in Europe would have that. 
uh, remained. Maybe someone has it in Germany but never heard of it. They're very hard to find uh, original boots. And uh, he, you got to undo these snaps here uh, to uh, bring the top on. And then you just go like this. And you push down on. And there you have it, original top. <laughs> oh, original horse hair. So uh, keep the top down. So this side looks better. Let's take a picture here. So Victor put up that top for me. I wanted to show you guys how it's sewn together. So if I have any German viewers, please let me know if you know somewhere where I can where he can buy gray green color. He knows you can buy gray, but this is not gray. Um, it's originally used to be gray green. So if you know where to buy that material please send me a message but I just uh, making this video so you can document it how how does one of these look like because there's not that many left over in the world from this car so those people who restores this um, they could probably see the the cuts and the and how it was put together and then inside there's also a cover part here when the car was sold new people were used uh, grill cream on their hair to grease it all up and then when they touched the top um, they left all kind of residue so people were complaining that this material what the, the inside was made out of um, it's not good because it's 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 not compatible with their hair hairstyle products so now we're gonna put the top down There is a latch there what needs to be clicked. and then followed by another little snap right there on the side and on the inside. And there's one down here too. Little clicks here and here and inside there. So it's quite an elaborate uh, doing to do this. Okay, we're done. All right, let me tell you one more thing. The Americans will buy anything. They'll buy an East German car. They buy Japanese cars. Uh, so Wartburg decided to sell cars here, and they didn't sell too many, maybe 1,200, maybe 1,300, something like that. Uh, so, and this is what's left of them, about 20, 30 of them maybe left still in the United States, roughly. So when they exported these cars, they exported them without the uh, headlights. And then they put the seal beams uh, in there, in here, in the, in, the, in the state side. Originally, they had uh, just a mirror on the back and it had an actual bulb in it. The uh, position light's supposed to be totally clear. It's unlike any European versions. Tommy car, but we made up with the East Germans, so we're friends now. Now if we can just make up with Cuba. So you can see the instruments, uh, they're miles per hour. It's very, very super rare to see an East German car with a miles per hour speedometer. Now this was on display at the Peterson Automotive Museum in LA when they first had the grand opening. And they painted the Brandenburg Gate in the background uh, in the museum, so. 
back in 95. So it does have a bragging rights to be in the museum. A disconnect the battery just just to be on the safe side. So I just give it a good twist. Safety first. Yeah. So we came to the backyard at Victor's place. Um, this one is a covered up DKW from '58. There is a a sport uh, Bad Burger 313 Sport. Um, incorrect rear bumpers, but fine actually. Um, it has a, a lot of rot in it. We're gonna open up the door a little and look inside. Very, very Californian. Uh, custom seats and they even covered up the uh, little emblem on the steering wheel the, the, the radio uh, has a has a Leopard covered uh, and also a dash has some Leopard covering so if you can think how much this car worth it's, it's incredible there is the uh, the roof uh, actually the folding roof is, is behind here that's actually present um, they install a whole new floor plan. The floor is gone. Let's try to close this. And the door is almost closed. Um, next to it, there is a, a Carmen Gear convertible. It's, it was it was in a rack. Uh, Victor is saying it's a '73. Then uh, we got another um, DKW. It also has the two-stroke engine, the three-cylinder two-stroke. Then we got a another station wagon here for parts no it's not a station wagon sorry i can't see it from the back but it's a limousine all right there is another late model carman gear in the back 74 and then if you keep going there is a uh, two wagons uh two wartburg wagons on the one on the right it's uh, supposed to have rear windows uh on the side this one doesn't have those top uh panoramic windows then there's another limousine, uh, like a sedan. Here's a convertible. Um, used to be covered up with that cover. And then uh, we're going to go to the other side. I chopped on all these trees three years ago. And they just grown back. They grow really fast. This upper molding is... US export. So it's saying that the upper molding here only was present on the US export on that door. And then we're gonna go over this way to see two more convertible Wartburgs from 59. They made it in 59, they look like a model, model 1960 model year. They all covered up here. And just we don't know what's living inside. Looks like a lot of mess. So those be a seats lot of belong to the other convertible. And there's a nice little sign down there. AWE maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that sign is. Any of you know? Let me know. Alright. This one is just like the blue Wartburg what we what we drove earlier. And then there's another one in front of it. It's crazy how fast this jungle growing. I'm the proud owner of 20 Wartburgs in the USA. And it's taken me 40 years plus to find all of them. They don't come every night or every day or every month. It's one every five to seven years you find one. So good luck in finding them. If anybody finds them, contact you or me, Vic, or Victor VictorWartburgUSA.com. This is where Victor keeps his uh, sport Warburg, which is quite a rarity. The last one in Europe sold for 150,000 euros last summer. It was not an asking price, it's actually sold for that much. He worked very hard on this car and it looks spectacular as far as he got with it. They still need to finish it. So he's going to push it out for us so we can see it better. So you can see the whole thing here. Um, the frame is already done, the paint job is finished. and. Uh, the uh, lights are uh, the American version, so this is an American export uh, car, and looks 
really shiny and really really nice uh, Victor did a lot of uh, repaints until it was just perfect so it's great it's not a professional restoration but I think it looks better than some of those well let me tell you about this car Willie Winkin Whitkin was the importer for Southern California on the Wartburgs here uh, he brought in he told me he brought in 1,333. I can only document roughly around 500 that he brought in. I can document five sports cars that he brought in. Um, five of them. One of them was white because I have the documentation. That one's still missing. That was in Long Beach. Uh, this one was in Santa Monica, sold originally. Ended up, at, ended up at a junkyard in Wilmington. And then the junkyard sold it to a private car dealer thing. And I found it on his car lot in, I think, 1976. And he wanted $1,000 at that time. But, uh, I, you know, I was uh, 20 years old. I didn't have $1,000. So I kept bugging him. Finally, I got him on a bad day. He sold me the car for $575. And uh, so that's how I got this. But this is, this is 1976, okay, or 77. Um, the total amount of Wart yeah, the Wartburg's uh, support. According to the book, 1,215 was supposedly sold. But that could be East Coast figures or West Coast or combined. I don't know for sure. Uh, now, there was uh, three more brought in on the East Coast. I have one of those. It's a white one. That's in Las Vegas right now. Um, and then there was one on the Internet I saw. And then one brought in for the um, car show in 1957-58. And whatever happened to that, the New York car show, we don't know. But I've been working on this thing for 14 years. Now I just took two years off because of COVID and uh, other, other extenuating circumstances. But uh, hopefully I can get back on it this next year and finish it. Uh, it is all painted and pretty much ready to go. It's just, you know, the details, the nuts and bolts need to be plated and uh, zinc plated and stuff like that before I can put it together. But uh, I do have everything. It just takes time and... The money is, you can't get anybody to work on a Wartburg in the USA, so it's all on me. But I'll have it done one of these days. 14 years of my life. <laughs> Don't let that happen to you. <laughs> Adios. Goodbye. Have a good one. So last summer, uh, we actually met in Germany with Victor. And then there was a sports car only meet. I made a video of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include a couple of uh, pictures here for your viewing convenience. Uh, that was actually a, a 313 Wartburg sports car meet. There's a difference between a convertible and a sports car. And maybe Victor is better at uh, telling me what's the difference between a convertible and a sports car. Okay. Uh, the big difference is what they did, they cut the roof line, so uh, it's a lower body stance. They, they stretched the fenders, so they made the fenders longer and the doors smaller. So that's one of the, one of the big differences with the, the sports car version is uh, they made the fenders longer, the doors shorter, but it's pretty much all the same body and everything, but, uh, and also they stretch the hood too. Okay, uh, let me tell you about the top. Uh, there is a steel hard top that's removable. Uh, there is, uh, I have documentations of one that came with an extra soft top behind the back seat. So that comes up a uh, little convertible soft top. And as um, far as I know, just the one was sold, and I, I do have it. It's in the backyard, <laughs> rusting away. Um, and that was extra money for the soft top. Now, as for the East Coast, I'm not sure what, what was sold. But I do have four of these sports cars. Um, this one here is from the L.A. area, sold in Santa Monica originally. Uh, the other one I got from San Francisco, and another one I got from Sacramento. That's the one with the extra soft top. And then there's two more unaccounted for, for Long Beach, LA, and then the one for Vallejo, California, it's unaccounted for. So there's two on the West Coast unaccounted for, and then probably two or three on the East Coast. There is one on the internet, came up in 2015, Hungarian, somebody posted it from Hungary, but nobody will tell me where the damn thing is. It's a rust bucket, but it's out there. It's a rusty uh, 313, it's on the internet. So that one's missing, so somewhere in the U.S., but nobody will tell me where it is. If you uh, find a Wartburg out there, any kind, sports car, regular Wartburg, rust bucket, hole in the floor, 
please leave a comment where we can find it and rescue it from the crusher. Thank you. So Victor has found a correspondence with the Playboy magazine and the Playboy magazine were telling him that um, his advertisement uh, placed in the 1959 September issue of the Playboy will come out. And very strangely, um, it's in there. I actually bought the magazines for that. And then I go to the uh, page 114 when I got the magazine and there is nothing there. There is this jazz advertisement. So apparently this magazine went to the East Coast, but Willie Winkin was in the West Coast. So I had to buy another uh, Playboy magazine, which looks exactly the same. This one and this one looks exactly the same. On the outside, they have the same articles and same everything, except this ad where the Wartburg is. So when I bought the second one from eBay uh, on page 114, here's the Wartburg ad in the Playboy magazine. This is like unreal for me. You can see the price, $1,799. Absolutely crazy for me. There are other car ad ad ads in it too. Like, uh, what, I'm sorry, here's an MG ad. And then at the very end, I think there is a NSU Prince. What was in it? Um, somewhere. So it's really interesting to see old magazines, like what they advertising and, and, and what they have in it. Um, there is a original English language uh, user manual. Oh, there it is. Sorry, it was a Renault Define at the very end. But I think there was an NSU Prince in it in somewhere. Um, so... This is uh, the blue book. Uh, all, all, all these original manuals were always blue. I have several for Barkas's and Trabants and other things in different languages. This one happened to be in English from 1956, as you see. And I don't even know where I found this, but um, this is a must if you have one of these Wartburgs. Um, I'm working on one of these uh, round Wartburgs as well. Um, it's still in Hungary. I just painted it last summer and I'm gonna keep on working on it. But you can see there is a cutout of it. And this was a sign which was on Checkpoint Charlie, which I got not too long ago in Berlin. So thank you for uh, watching. And then if you have any comments, uh, if I made any mistakes, please leave me a message and see you guys next Friday.